video will summarize the capabilities of the GP4000 or GP3000 HMI's web server feature. It will also quickly demonstrate how to set up the web server via GP Pro EX. We'll begin with a GP4000 or GP3000 series HMI, human machine interface, connected to one or more PLCs or devices. We ensure we have either a USB stick, CF card, or SD card connected to the HMI. Your options will depend on your model of Proface HMI being used. The web server data will reside on the media you have inserted. Configuration and download of the web server is performed using Proface's HMI development software, GP Pro EX. Connect the GP4000 or GP3000 HMI via the onboard Ethernet port to a PC or other web enabled device. Once connected, we now have access to website features that the Proface GP4000 and GP3000 series HMIs provide. This can be something as simple as a web page or more advanced things like RSS feeds. Enter the website address in a browser, usually just the IP address of the Proface HMI, and you are presented with the website as configured. Note, if you have access to a DNS server, you can assign a domain name to the IP address of the HMI. This, of course, simplifies remembering the website address. Using the default website provided by Proface and GP Pro EX, we can now display live data or active historical or log alarms, as well as many other features. So you can see that many web enabled devices and software in the market will be able to take advantage of the Proface web server features. Now that we have an understanding how everything works together, let's configure an existing GP Pro EX project to take advantage of the web server feature. So here we are at the desktop. I'm going to double click on my existing project. This will automatically open GP Pro EX for me. As you can see, I already have screens configured in this project. In order to turn on the web server, we need to get into the display unit settings. These can be found in the project window, system settings, display, display unit, or of course we can use the menus as well, project, System Settings Display Unit. So here we are at the uh, Display Unit Settings. I'm going to go to the Remote Viewer tab, and there we have the web server. All we have to do to enable the web server is to check the box Enable Web Server, and we can choose, in this particular case, using a GP4601, we have two choices, an SD card or a USB storage device. We're going to use an SD card today. All the rest of the options that are here can be left as defaults. A uh, website will be the folder that actually sticks it in, in the core uh, folder on the SD card. So that's all we need to configure the web server. Now all that's left is to transfer this project to the HMI. So we go to the Transfer Project, Save the Project, and this brings up the Transfer dialog box. Before we go ahead and transfer this project down, we need to keep in mind that two things need to happen. One, we need to transfer the project so that the web server feature is enabled within the HMI and recognizes in this case the SD card being the web server media, but then two, we need to transfer the website itself down to the HMI. To send this project to the HMI, it's obvious that we use the send project button here at the top or the hyperlink lo located next to it. Down here we have the Send Website button which allows us to manually transfer the website whenever we press this button. We can also, however, instead of doing it in a two-step process, we can do it in a one-step process where it will send the project and immediately afterwards send the website data. This can be accomplished by going into the Transfer Settings button here and checking the box Transfer Site Data. We need to keep in mind though that every time we hit that Send Transfer button now, it will automatically send the transfer site data resulting in a longer download. Therefore, some people may want to uncheck this box after you've completed one successful transfer. So let's go ahead and use this site transfer data checkbox. We'll hit OK and we'll hit Send Project. Notice the default setting in the transfer dialog is set to USB. I have my USB cable plugged into my HMI. I'll hit my Transfer button. It's noticed that there's been a change in the system settings, specifically that web server feature that we have enabled. Nothing else needs changing on the HMI, so it's just going to send the changes it needs, and now it begins transferring the website as well. 
for the essence of time, we'll just fast forward. Okay, so the transfer is complete. Keep in mind though that although we transferred using USB in this particular case, you can also use Ethernet to transfer both your screen data as well as your website data. So with the transfer complete, all we need to do is close down the transfer tool. We can minimize GPPROEX for the moment. I can bring up my web browser. I'll type in the IP address of the unit. I already know that IP address off the top of my head. And here we are. Here is the, the Proface website, the default website that ships with GPPROEX. Briefly, we'll just go over the device view and alarm information tabs. Device view. This allows us to live monitor and if necessary read and write to any register value that is internal to the Proface or external to the Proface that the HMI is hooked up to via a configured driver. In this case I'm just going to use an internal register, user 23000. Monitor just one point and I'll have it update every one second and read it as a 16-bit unsigned. Start monitoring and we'll see as this blinks, that's every time it refreshes with a new value, and you can see the value in the HMI is increasing. So there's some type of internal logic or script or uh, coordination with an external device that's changing that value. If I need to write to that value, I can click on that value, enter a value such as 5, write, and there we can see the HMI reset back to 5 and has started updating the value already. Over on the alarm information, we can see we already have some alarms. In this particular case, we've got a water gauge error that's occurred. And this occurred at uh, 304, 306, and 308 today. We can also see the recovery. And of course, no one has acknowledged it because we just did a download to the HMI. There are other features available via this web interface, but we're not going to cover those in this particular video. For more information, please feel free to look at the GPPROEX manuals available both for download online or in the GPPROEX software. Thank you.